when you stay at the monastery, things are peaceful, relatively. Nothing much pulls you in. But when then you leave, there are lots of things that seem to pull you in to disturb your concentration, disturb your center that you've been working on so hard while you've been here. And you have to realize they're not doing any pulling. There's that conversation in the canon where the question arises. When a black ox is yoked to a white ox, is the black ox the yoke of the white? Is the white the yoke of the black? And of course the answer is no. It's the yoke that's connecting them to, that's keeping them together. In the same way, sights are not a yoke on your eyes. And your eyes are not a yoke on the sights. It's your passion for the sights. That's what yokes these things together. And the same applies to your ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. In other words, the disturbance comes from within. We all know that remark by John Cha, sitting here meditating and there's a noise. and The noise is not disturbing you. You're disturbing the noise. You're the one making comments on it. And the comments are the things that are actually destroying the concentration. That conversation of the yokes goes on to say that you've got the case of the Arahants. Who can live in the world without being yoked to anything? Even though they see sights and smell aromas, hear sounds just like the rest of us do. The difference, of course, is that they don't have the passion to go out and feed on these things. So as you go through the day, try to notice what you're nibbling on, what you're feeding on, which desires, which attitudes cause you to latch on to certain sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, either to get lusting for them, hungering for them, for more, or feeding on the anger you feel when you run into things you don't like. Keep turning around, looking at the problem inside. This is not to deny that there's a lot of injustice in the world, a lot of things that need to be straightened out. But your responsibility is here, the extent to which you are causing yourself unnecessary suffering. As you go hungering for things, this could have some protection, because stuff comes in very strongly. Again, the real problem is the mind's opening its mouth to take all these things in. So on the one hand, you want to be able to maintain your concentration, because after all, if you find yourself feeding on things outside, or feeding on attitudes that are really unhealthy inside, you've got to give yourself something better to feed on. That's why we practice concentration, so you can have a sense of stability, a sense of being centered. and self-sufficient as you go through the day. It's like having your own food, water, and shelter. It's like going on to the moon. You've got all the To survive on the moon, you've got to have all your requisites with you. You need your space suit. You need your food. You need your oxygen. And if you realize the world is a pretty alien place, then you're more likely to Know that you've got a plan as you go through the day. Otherwise, you think, well, everything's going to be wonderful, and this is going to happen, and that's going to be this way, and this is going to be that way. And of course, it's not that way. Or even it is that way, how much longer is it going to stay that way? You've got to go into the world prepared to be self sufficient. So look at your food. How is the breath right now? You may have tried out of John Lee's various ways of playing with the breath. Well, there are a lot more. One time when I was staying with John Fu, I was trying to get him to write a, his own breath meditation manual. He said, John Lee did a really good job already. Why should I add to it? And 
He said, but you know so many little tricks that are not mentioned there. He said, oh, that's just kind of miscellaneous stuff. I wrote some of his, his meditation tricks down in Awareness Itself. But one of the main points is that you've got to learn to use your own ingenuity, because it's your breath. You've got to get in touch with that sense of the energy flow in the body. And to what extent are you pushing and pulling it out of shape? To what extent is it damaged and you've got to do some repair work? Always try to start with the areas where you feel at least something is pleasant or something is okay before you go moving into the areas where things are not okay. And when you go moving in, don't leave your original base. If the area around the heart feels good, okay, stay there. And think of the energy and your awareness spreading out from that spot. Don't leave that spot. Think of it radiating out like the light of this candle in the front of the room. The candle flame doesn't move around to the different spots in the room that it's illuminating. It just stays there at that one spot, and the rays of light go out from it. Try to develop an awareness that's like that, so that you're coming from a position of strength. And think of the energy not only in the body, but also around the body. There's a kind of cocoon that protects the body, unless you've torn it open one way or another. To so ask yourself, how can you heal the wounds? Think of the breath moving all around. That's like your spacesuit. And the food is a sense of well-being that comes. It can either be rapturous or it can be more calm, easeful. Even equanimity in concentration is said to be a very subtle form of pleasure. That's the food that just keeps you going. And of course, you'll find that out of the force of habit, you're going to drop this food and go for something else. And then you have to ask yourself, why? This is where insight comes in. Concentration doesn't solve all the problems. You've got to have some insight. So why do you go for these things? What meaning do they have for you? You go out to nibble on something because you think it's good, or do you nibble on it because you think it's dangerous and you've got to ward it off? And a lot of that comes from the fact that we're not confident enough in the concentration that it's going to provide enough food, provide enough nourishment. But also comes from misunderstandings. The idea that you're going to gain something important by going out and nibbling on this. Thoughts of lust, thoughts of anger, thoughts of jealousy, resentment. You've got to look into these things to see where you're getting some sort of satisfaction out of them, and what a miserable satisfaction it is. It's only when you realize that you're not gaining any genuine nourishment out of it. In John Lee's images of a dog chewing on a bone. It has nothing but the taste of its own saliva. In other words, you keep commenting on this issue or that issue and running it over and over and over again in your mind. But what are you getting out of it? It's just your own saliva. When you've decided you had enough of that, that's when you can that's when you let go. We all have character traits that we don't like about ourselves. But the question is, why do you keep hanging on to them? There's something in there that you feel you gain some nourishment, that you gain some sense of self-justification or whatever. It's only when you see, this is why you go for it, and it's pretty miserable. That's when you can let it go. And you find that when you stop feeding on these defilements inside, that you no longer feel any need to feed on things outside either. The cause all comes from here. 
It's the passion from here that creates the yoke, that ties you down to things. So have a very strong sense of your center here. There's that passage in Numbudun where he says when the mind goes sending out for things, or rushing out toward things, that's the cause of suffering. How are you going to know when the mind is rushing out unless you've got a good, solid reference point inside? So you can sense its movements. Otherwise, everything is all very fluid and sloshing around inside, and you really don't know what's happening, what's going where. But when you have something solid inside, okay, then you can sense the movements. So try to keep the center as solid as possible. And that's what's going to give your discernment the opportunity to look into your feeding habits. and do something skillful about them.